Dave, you're fine. All right, we ain't missing nothing. Okay. All right, we can uh, all stand and face the rules room, and uh, we're going to open up. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name. We pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I want to give a little bit of, let me turn the mic off. I want to give a little bit of background on how the debate came about. Um, this is my buddy Juan right here. He basically uh, gave me a call too close uh, to the mic. about a job too and close to something the like that. Too. And I hear, I hear. Okay. About uh, everything. And um, basically asked me, am I still a Hebrew Israelite? And I said, that don't change, <laughs> right? Um, so then after that, he went through some of the faiths that he has and some of the beliefs that he has and said, hey, you know, we can get down, we can sit down and, and talk about this. So that's what we're doing. So he said, you want to set up a debate? So we got it live on Facebook. We got it streaming, everything like that. Uh, can somebody get a, a charger plugged up to my phone uh, with the extension cord? Can you get that done? Um, so yeah, the topics that we're going to be going over is the Trinity and salvation. So, Dietrich, can you go through everything as far as how everything's going to be moderated so we can keep it on a fair ground, everybody gets the same amount of time, and so on and so forth. Yes, absolutely. And thank you, and um, welcome to the Church of Israel's um, Center. And I'm um, glad to start out with the introduction and presentation on the Trinity and nature of God by the Church of Israel. That will last for 15 minutes. Then we'll go into the rebuttal and presentation on the Trinity and nature of God by Metro Praise International. That will take approximately 15 minutes. Anything like that. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the scriptures. Brother Antonio is going to lead it off for us. All right, first book we're going to go into is the book of John, chapter 4. I'm sorry, uh, John, chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 39. John chapter 5 and 39. We'll start at verse 1. John 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. In the beginning was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was with God. He said, so right there, he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. I sound like two, but go ahead. And the Word was God. Uh -huh. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay, so now we have the Word, and He was with God, and He was in the beginning with God. Let's get down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, uh -huh. and dwelt among us. So now the Word who was with God was the one who was made flesh. So who was the Word? Jesus. Jesus was the Word. Keep going. And we beheld His glory, uh -huh. the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he came down, he was with the Father in the beginning, he was made flesh, and he was full of grace and truth. So now, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because like Jarrell said, we prove all things. So let's, let's go ahead and prove that uh, Jesus was in the beginning. We're going 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll start at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not think you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And when we see his words, he ain't the one that's going to judge him. He has one that's going to judge him. Go ahead. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So that word, this Bible here that we read, and that's what's going to judge you in the last days. All that's written in this book, Old Testament, New Testament, that's what's going to judge you in the end. Now, let's go to John chapter 14. We'll pick it up in verse 15. Word. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, the first word he said it was if. That's a conditional verb. You can do it, you don't have to do it. 
But he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep going. And I will pray the Father. Mm -hmm. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So he said that if you love me, keep my commandments. And he's going to pray to the Father to give you a comforter. All right? So now, let's go to the... Uh, Matter of fact, before you go there, let's go to John in the 10th chapter. Let's go to John, go to John 10. Chapter 10. We go to John 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 30 because um, what we want to do is break down how it's perceived as the Trinity. And you say, hey, you know, it's all in one. It's all three in one. All of them are God. Is that what you guys believe? The Trinity. The Trinity, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to read We're gonna read this thing. Let's go to John the 10th chapter and verse 30. Okay. And we're going to read one verse here. Go ahead. I and my father are one. What do you say? He said, I am my father. I am my father. He didn't say, I am my father and the Holy Ghost. Now, you know what? I, I already know what we're about to go with this thing. And let's read it. Let's read it all. Let's go to First John, the, uh, the, the fifth chapter. Let's go to First John 5. We're going to start out from verse 1. Mm -hmm. Let's read this thing. Let's read this thing. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Whosoever believeth that Jesus. Let's go ahead. For well, this is the love that of God. That is the love of God. Go ahead. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So they say, oh, them commandments are so hard to keep. No, them commandments are not grievous. Go ahead. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That is what it is. We believe that Jesus came in the flesh and died for our past sin, and we have access back to eternal life that Adam and Eve took away. Right? Go ahead. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth, believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? How else are you going to overcome this world if you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Go ahead. This is he that came by water and blood. What do they mean by that? Jesus, when he was on the cross, before they came and broke his legs when the Sabbath was coming, they stuck him in his side. And what came out of him? Water right. and blood. Go ahead. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only. But by water and blood. Go ahead. And it is the spirit that bears. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is what? It is the spirit. It is the spirit that bears witness. Right? Go ahead. Keep going. Because the spirit is The truth. spirit is true. Now, what is another word for the spirit? You got so many forms of the spirit in this book. You got the, the, the spirit of truth, the word of truth. That is what it is. Go ahead. For there are three that bear record. Now, read it in context. Go ahead. Say that again. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Go ahead. The Father, the, the Father. Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? One. The fullness thereof of who? Jesus. Okay. Okay. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews one. And we, and we coming back to this. We gonna we gonna we 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 gonna we coming back to that. And we going here just to put uh, another differential between the Father, the Son, and His ministers, His holy ministers, the angels, so to speak. Let me start verse one. Uh, you start at verse one. When you get it. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the Father by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. By his what? By his Son. son. He? So, so, the, so the Holy Ghost, is it considered an angel as well? All right, let's keep going. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It was the equal with them. He said more excellent. Name. Okay, let's keep going. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He said it to Gabriel. He, he, said, said, it to he, said, he, said, he said it to Lucifer. He, he said it to one. Said it to one. one. And again, I will be to him as a father, and he shall be to me a son. Let's skip down to verse 7. Let's go. And of the angels, he said, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire? But, un but unto the son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Wait, O God. That's what he is. That's what the Son is, right? Verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Not to one. Keep Are on. they not all ministering spirits? Are they not all ministering spirits? So Go ahead. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now I got a precept on that. Psalms 110. Because we're going to find out if this was actually ever said. Check this out. Psalms, the 110th chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Verse 1. The Go Lord ahead. said unto my Lord. Wait, wait, that's two. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Go ahead. Sit down at my right hand. Didn't we just read that in the New Testament? Yes, Didn't we sir. just read that? We just read that. Keep, read it again. Read the whole verse again. 
The Lord said unto my Lord, That's what he said. Keep going. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's what he said. He said, Look, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. He said, This is what we're going to get going. Check this out. Isaiah, I got a precept on that. Isaiah the ninth chapter. Let's go to Isaiah 9. Because, like I said, we prove all things. They say, you, know, you If, if you're going to have your ministry, you make, better make full proof of that ministry. And our ministry is this book. We can prove all things because it is written. Isaiah the ninth chapter, we're going to pick it up in verse 6. Brother, when you get there, go ahead and read it. But unto us a child is born. Okay, so who is that child? Jesus. Let's read it. Come on, go ahead. Unto us a son is given. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. The government going to be upon his shoulders. He's going to be in charge of all that. Keep going. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful, Counselor. go ahead. That's the, the name. Mighty God. The mighty God. Go ahead. The everlasting the Father. The everlasting Father. Keep going. The Prince of Peace. What angel got that name? Did the Holy Ghost ever get those beautiful names that Jesus, the Father, and the, the, the Father and the Son got? Those are two in one. Those are the Godhead, but bodily fullness thereof. Keep going. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. No end to it. Upon the throne of David. Who going to sit on the throne of David? Jesus. Go ahead. And upon his kingdom to who, order. Who going to have that kingdom? Jesus. Keep going. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs, the 8th chapter. Because, like, this this one, we want to see, are they in one, or do they, do they agree? We want to see which ones are one and which ones just, just agree. Let's, let's do this thing the right way. Proverbs, the 8th chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 22. When you get there, bro, go ahead and read it. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Wait, wait. The Lord possessed who? He, he's talking about a possession here. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Go ahead. Before his works, when he strengthened the fountain of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree, that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. I was by him. Go ahead. As one brought up with him. One brought up with him. Go ahead. And I was daily his delight. Go ahead. Rejoicing always before him. Mm. Rejoicing in the habitable habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. That's, that's what he said. Now let's go to John. Let's, let's go, go to John. John. Let's go oh. back to first John. Okay. Go back to first yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go back to first John chapter five and verse seven. Mm -hmm. Just so we can Get us a, a crystal understanding on this uh this uh trinity doctor. And okay. whenever you get there, give me about a minute. This will probably be your last scripture because you're running out of time. Okay. You know what? I got one one scripture after this and it's and you can be done. Uh but there read are, that scripture. But there are three that bear record in heaven. We can agree that heaven is a place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we all agree on that? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, <laughs> and these three are one. Okay, so we can agree that the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Word are on the same accord, spiritually, correct? That's correct. All right, uh, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read, and we're going to let them move on. Give them the same thing we got. We are one. So, yeah, we're going to hear now the rebuttal from um, the Messiah Praise International. I'm now going to show you the Holy Spirit is identified as Jehovah God according to the very book of Hebrews that you cited. So let's go to Hebrews 3, verses 7 to 11. Psalms talking about Jehovah applied to the Holy Spirit. So according to your logic, the Holy Spirit must be Jehovah God, one with the Father and the Son, otherwise you're denying Scripture. So in Hebrews 3, 7 to 11, read out loud. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. In the day of temptation in the wilderness. The author of Hebrews, which I take to be Paul, the Holy Spirit said the words of Psalm 95, 7 to 11. Turn to Psalm 95, 7 to 11, and you'll see these are the words of Jehovah, not no ministering angel. So in Psalm 95, 7 to 11, read it out loud for me. Psalm 95, verse 7 to 11. Mm -hmm. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation. 
And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. When your fathers tempted who? He says me. Who's the me that the fathers tempted in the desert? The minister angel or Jehovah God Almighty? Jehovah God Almighty. Jehovah God. And yet, according to Hebrews, these are the words of the Holy Spirit, not no ministering angel. So Jehovah speaking, and yet Hebrews says it's the Holy Spirit speaking. Ergo, the Holy Spirit is Jehovah God. The second reference. Go to Hebrews 10, 15 to 17. Hebrews 10, 15 to 17, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 33 and 34. Another passage about Jehovah God is applied to the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10, 15 to 17. So what Jehovah says in Jeremiah, the Holy Spirit says in Hebrews 10, 15 to 17. So if we're going to be consistent in using your own logic and method of interpreting the scriptures, the conclusion is when the Holy Spirit speaks, Jehovah speaks because he is Jehovah, one with the Father and the Son. Hebrews 10, 15 to 17. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now the text is quite clear, because I know we all want to honor the scriptures and honor God, not tap dance around the plain reading of the text. The author just said, these are the words that the Holy Spirit uttered, but go to Jeremiah 31, 33, 34. The one who uttered these words were no ministering angel. In those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law on their inward parts and write, write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Hebrews is not the only writing that takes the words of Jehovah and attributes it to the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Acts 28, 25 to 27, to see what does Paul say in regards to the words of Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. In Acts 28, 25 to 27, Paul quotes the words of Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, words spoken by Jehovah God Almighty, and Paul says those words were speak, spoken by the Holy Spirit nonetheless. Acts 28, 25 to 27. And when they agreed not amongst themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word, well, you shall not see and not perceive. Mm -hmm. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they clothed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. I should heal them. In the context, who's the I that would heal them? Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, right? But go to Isaiah 6 and see who uttered these words. Isaiah chapter 6, in fact, the entire chapter is a powerful witness to the fact that the Holy Spirit is Jehovah God who speaks, not some created angelic being like Gabriel. But we'll pick it up for the sake of time in Isaiah 6. Let's read verses 8 to 10 to see who spoke those words to and through Isaiah to the nation of Israel. Isaiah 6, verses 8 to 10. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? The voice of who? The Lord. Not Gabriel, not Michael, right? The Lord. All right, good morning. Then said I, Hear my, said me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Sound familiar? Aren't those the very words that Paul just described to the Holy Spirit in Acts 28, 25 to 27? Right. And yet, according to Paul, those words that Isaiah says was spoken to him by Jehovah was actually the Holy Spirit. What else do you need to be convinced that the Holy Spirit is no creature but God Almighty, one with the Father and the Son? And that they are one. And you had said from the very beginning you didn't see the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit was over the deep. That is the beginning that John is referencing. Psalm 104, 29, 30. I love you, brother. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 104, 29, 30. Let's see that the Holy Spirit is the creator of God, which again will throw a monkey wrench in your belief that he's a ministering angel, because according to Scripture, Jehovah alone created all things and rejuvenates the entire earth, which is a work of God, not no created spirit being. But it gets more clear in Job 33, verse 4. Who created man, according to Job 33, verse 4? Go to Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God hath made me. That's got to be a typo. Because the Spirit is Don't a ministering type. angel, right? And ministering angels do not create. Only God creates. But according to Job, the Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Now this poses a problem. Because according to Isaiah 44, 24... 
Jehovah alone creates all things. For the Spirit to create, and only Jehovah creates, the Spirit must be Jehovah, otherwise you have a contradiction in your Bible. Isaiah 44, 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44, 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth. I did earth. it with the ministering angel? Nope. I did it with a created being? I am the Lord. Or I did it all by myself, all alone? By myself. So how can the Spirit of God create man? How can the Spirit of God create the earth and resurrect the dead if the Spirit is a created angelic being as our brothers in humanity suggest? They have a contradiction, not us. That's why we're Trinitarians, right? Amen. Okay, so now again, finish it again. Are that, you ready? ready? Oh, okay, then that. go to Job 9, 8. Job 9, verse 8. Job 9, verse 8. So I don't need to establish the deity of the Father and Son. You guys already done it for me, so thank you. You make it a little easier for me to prove the deity of the Holy Spirit. Job 9, verse 8. Here mm -hmm. we go. Which alone spread out the heavens and tread out... I and created angel? Alone. Alone, right? Which alone spread out the heavens and tread upon the waves of the sea. Mm -hmm. So alone he did it? Alone. He did what with the heavens alone? He spread out the heavens and tread upon the waves of the sea. But you got a problem, Psalm 33, verse 6, because it says, by his ruach, and you guys can check up the Hebrew, it says ruach, even though your translation will say breath, by his spirit he made the starry, starry host of the heavens. Psalm 33, verse 6. Verse 6. By the word of the Lord... By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The Hebrew says ruach. Ruach means spirit. So by his spirit he made the starry host. But Job 9.8 said, Jehovah did it all alone. So either we have a creature helping Jehovah, and therefore contradiction, or the spirit must be one with Jehovah, and therefore Jehovah, if there is no contradiction. But now it gets a little more juicier. Let's go to 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. 2 Samuel... 23 verses 1 to 3. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the, of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake, spake by me and his so word. clearly it's the Spirit of the Lord speaking, right? Amen. So I just want you to make sure it says the Spirit is speaking, and then go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Whose word? His word, the Holy Spirit. Okay, now keep reading. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel. That's got to be a contradiction. Because I was just told the Spirit is a ministering angel, and it's his word on David's tongue. But David said, when the Spirit spoke, it was the God of Israel speaking. Oh. I don't think you get any clearer that the Spirit is the God of Israel who speaks to the servants of God. Finish it. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. Now go to Isaiah 40 verse 13 to see that the Holy Spirit possesses the omni-attributes of God. Attributes that only God possesses and no creature can possess. Isaiah 40 verse 13. Alright, Isaiah 40 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor hath taught him? Who has directed, meaning counsel taught the Spirit of the Lord? Answer, no one. Can anyone teach the Spirit of the Lord? No. Okay. Because you can't teach someone who's omniscient anything. He knows everything already. But only God is omniscient and needs no one to teach him. So how can the Spirit be a created angel if he's omniscient and there's no one who's able to instruct him in any sense of the word? If he's a creature, you have a problem because a creature shares in God's omniscience. Now let's go to John 14 and 16 to 17. John 14, 16 to 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. The last time I checked, angels do not indwell anyone, let alone a group of believers at the same time. But here it says, this Spirit of truth will indwell all believers in order to strengthen and empower them to do the work of God. That means the Spirit must be omnipresent. So I'm going to challenge my brothers in humanity. Show me a single verse where a created angel indwells a single individual, let alone a group of individuals at the same time, which would be an attribute of omnipresence. So just like the Spirit indwells believers, so too the Father and the Son. <clears throat> but now, go to Hebrews 9.14. And then the pastor is going to get the last word in. Hebrews 9.14. 
All right. Verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Now I challenge them again to show me any created angel said to be eternal. Show me the phrase eternal angel. Here it says the spirit is eternal. That same adjective is used of the Son and the true God and of no creature. Go to 1 John 1, 2 and see who is the eternal life, that which was with the Father, and who is the eternal life, the true God. So the true God is eternal, the Son who is with the Father is eternal, and the Spirit is eternal. So I challenge them to show me a single verse where a created angel is said to be eternal and it dwells one individual, let alone a group of individuals. Read for me 1 John 1, 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father. So that's the Son. He is eternal, right? Amen. He is with the Father. First John 5, 20 says, the true God and eternal life, and the Spirit is eternal. So, Pastor, I'm going to give it to you. And this is the name that Jesus revealed to us. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. First John 5, 7. You have your evidence. You've been served the Trinity. Excuse me, are these gentlemen also on the Wi-Fi? Because I got booted out. Are you on Wi-Fi too? Because I think you guys have like six Wi-Fi. Is there any one that you can kind of step out? Because it's hard for me to get on right now. Yeah. Just maybe one person dropping a feed because my feed dropped. How many feeds do you guys have? Uh, I got two going. Two, and then he's got two for four? Two little four? Are you with Sam or are you with... I can't move my You're with Sam and it's going good? Okay. Well, I'm actually having some issues myself. Are you, I, I, I keep getting booted out, but uh, sure, we can have it. Okay. Well, as long as you're with Sam, we're getting it as well. So Absolutely. Good. Right. Thank you. You ready? Okay, so um, first what I'm going to read to you guys is, uh, this is from uh, a couple of history books that, uh, man, it's just amazing how, how much you, you can get from doing research and and really looking into some things. And I, I looked up where actually the Trinity came from. So let's look it up. Uh, and I actually, uh, right in this box over here, you guys can come and check this out. I'll show you guys the book. The name of the book is um, The Christian Faith by Jackie's Dupias. Hang on just a second. Okay, and this is page 151. Uh, it's a couple excerpts out of here. I'll read it real fast as we're gonna be short on time. For the Trinitarian doctrine, two, doc two documents are important. The decree for the Greeks in 1439 and the decree for the Copts in 1442 address the Syrian Christians and contains an elaborate formulation of the Trinitarian faith with special emphasis of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's funny about this, what's funny about this in the book, it actually says, and you guys can come and uh, read this after the debate, the word Trinity never is said in the Bible. So I would like to know where the word, I challenge you guys to tell me where the word Trinity came from. And also you challenged us to show you uh, one person right as well. Uh, this guy didn't even believe that there was a God at one point. Wow, this is somebody to believe. That in God, everything is one except for the relative opposition of the persons, e.g. Be between father and son. Now in that same sense, there was kind of a contradiction there, right? The Athanasian Creed. This is uh, cited in uh, The Catholic Faith by Lewis Morrow. That's also in this box over here as well. That is going to be on page 33 for everybody citing this online. The Trinity is a supernatural mystery. We cannot fully understand how the three divine persons, though really distinct from one another, are one in the same God. Because this is a supernatural mystery. Now, we're going to uh, definitely touch on the fact of you saying there's no, no, uh, no excerpt in the Bible with spirits being inside of a person. Let's go to Mark, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Mark 5. Let's, do that. Let's go to Mark 5. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit? Keep going, keep going, keep he going. He had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. Go ahead. No, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. Go ahead. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man chain him. So this dude was wild. So they couldn't even chain this guy. He was going crazy all the time and breaking out of the chains, so they couldn't even bind this guy. Go ahead. 
and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So this guy is going crazy. He's in the mountains, cutting himself with stones, crying out, and being by the tombs, all that, right? Keep going. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Okay, so and when he saw Jesus, now... And we're going we gonna to touch on salvation. I was going to say this for this, but we're going to learn something on the way to learning something. Go ahead. And cry with a loud voice. So, okay. So, the scriptures say that if you call upon the name of Jesus and believe that he is the, be the only begotten son, you shall be saved. Right? What did, the, what did this person do? Go ahead. You keep going. What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Whoa, he confessing his name. Keep going. Thou son of the most high God. Whoa, keep going. I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. Now, keep on going. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of that man, that unclean spirit. Now watch what this spirit say back to him. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion. Whoa. For we are many. Whoa. So you said, he said, show us where. It will be a spirit inside of a person. Keep going. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the Wait, swine. wait, wait, wait. What is a devil? The That's the spirit. That's an Whoa. And this is in a person. He said, well, I'm going to read it. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was there not unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Why are they trying to go over there swine? That swine is unclean. Learning something on the way to learn something. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the I want you to go next real quick. Oh no, we good, we good. I ain't, I ain't stopping. <laughs> Let's get a description of what Ezekiel saw. Mm -hmm. You can just, uh, you can pick it up at verse 1 and skip down to verse 5. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river, river of Shebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. Okay, so the heavens are opened up. Let's skip down to verse 5. We don't have that much time. So also, we know the heavens opened up. So skip to verse 5. Everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. Okay, now you can read in Ezekiel and get a description of these faces on this creature and the wings and, you know, how it was covered in crystals. We can also go to Ezekiel 28 and get a description of Satan and their full glory and their full power. Yes, sir. But we can also, I know we know in Genesis where Abraham uh, was met, met the Lord, where the Lord met Abraham with, with two men with him. So we know these angels can come in the form of men as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's prove that. That's uh, Hebrews 13. I want you to get that to the Lord. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thirteen what? Thirteen one. In, in one and two. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. So you strangers, you know, the strangers are strangers. We know what strangers are. Go ahead. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So that means we entertain these creatures in human form. Uh, I don't believe anyone is sick to see one of them in their full glory, their full power. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear one more scripture, and then Jerev, your scripture will going to be quick. Yep. Let's just go to 2 Kings 19 and 35. And see what one of these uh, uh, these these holy ghosts can do. Um, 2 Kings what, brother? Uh, 19 and 35. 19 and 35. When you, when you get it, read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians in hundred, four score, and five thousand. The Lord did it himself. He sent an angel to take his business. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And when they and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Okay, let's go to First Corinthians. Let's go to First Corinthians one, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twenty four. Brother, when you get there, go ahead and read it. First Corinthians one and twenty four. Yes, sir. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay, now skip down, skip down to verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Wait, wait, now read that again. But of him. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom 
and in righteousness, and in sanctification. Keep going, verse 31, 31. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let him glory in the Lord. Now, let's go, let, let's, let's, let's keep on reading this thing, because we, we want to prove all things when it comes to this, right? Let's go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. We're going to go back to Hebrews, because we, we cited something. Uh, we're going to read, read Hebrews, the first chapter. Because you said you wanted us to prove this thing. Let's prove this thing. Hebrews 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Wait, he's spoken unto us by who? His son. His son in the last days, right? That's when Jesus came in the flesh and he spoke to us, right? And he was in the flesh, in, in that. And let me ask you that, guys, this. Can you prove this to the scripture? That the, while the son was on this earth, was there ever an angel that came down talking? Was there ever the Holy Ghost speaking? While Jesus is on this earth. Can we point that out? In the, he, flesh. He, in the flesh. Now keep going. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Wait, wait, wait. Who being the brightness of what? His glory. His glory, which he had from the beginning. Keep going. And upholding all things by the word of his power. His power. When he had by himself purged our sins. By himself he did that. Right, go ahead. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Go ahead. Being made so much better than the angels. Wait, 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 wait. Why did they have to point that out? That he was made so much better than the angels. These creatures, as y'all say, we call it. Right? Go ahead. Because they were supposed to go 10, but they went three minutes over. Y'all got to call time. We just, uh, we're, yeah, we're call time. By the way, are you guys Yes. 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 I I I and him. We are one. <laughs> He's not me. Okay. <laughs> Another example. Okay. Are ready? Yeah, we're ready. Thank you. I want you gentlemen to listen to what we're saying because I think we just spoke past each other. No offense, but for about 13 minutes you answered questions we never even asked. I want you to go back because I actually have the feed that dropped, so I could go back and actually listen. To the questions we asked you, and I don't mean this in an insulting way, I know sometimes we get so energetic, we miss it. The first question that he posed to you had to deal with where in the scripture is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit called an angel? Where is that text? You started off giving us a history book. Now I want you to understand, I have a degree, a master's degree, I'm getting my doctorate. I can use that history book to prove my point, but you won't accept it. A lot of times the Israelites are... Uh, the black Hebrew Israelites are conspiratorial when it comes to the information. You pick and choose. So let's leave those books aside because trust me, we have all the universities here on our side. Okay, so if you want to do that, that's fine. That wasn't his question, was to show us the Athanasian Creed. The question was to you to show us where the Holy Spirit is called an angel. He went through verse after verse after verse to show you the Holy Spirit is called Jehovah. That was the first time we talked past each other. So gentlemen, please, let's, let's engage each other. And then the second thing is, we never said that a spirit couldn't possess a person. Of course we believe in demon possession. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, when did the Holy Spirit possess a person as a demonic spirit? You're using that example now. And then speak on behalf of Jehovah. That is the context. So you're, you're reading your worldview into the scripture. We call that eisegesis. This is not line upon line, precept upon precept. You're bouncing from text to text to text, not understanding the context. You can't use text without context. I don't mean that insulting, but let's just let our brother speak again and listen to the passages in context, answer the questions that we're going for, and let's at least in those last few moments get some back and forth. Thank you. Yeah, uh, some of your points you raise, I was wondering... Who are you addressing it to? For example, you showed me that creatures can be spirits. I never denied that. I never said that you don't have spirit, spirits who are creatures. I said, show me where the spirit is said to be an angelic creature. That was my challenge. So when you went to Ezekiel 1, you're not addressing my point there. And then you quoted Hebrews 1.3, and you actually ended up proving the Holy Spirit must be God. Because you said that Jesus by himself purged our sins. By himself, right? You emphasize that? Well, now you have a contradiction with Hebrews 9, 14. Read Hebrews 1, 3, because I'm going to tell you what you said. It's been recorded, so it's there. Sure. Yeah. God, who has sundry times... Go to verse 3 for the second time. Yeah. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power, by the word of his power, 
when he had by himself. And you said by himself. You even emphasize that. Well, either you have a contradiction or now you're going to have to admit the Holy Spirit is one with Jesus. Because Hebrews 9.14 says when Jesus did it, he did it through the eternal spirit. So by himself means all alone. Then either you have a contradiction or the spirit has to be one with Jesus for him to do it by himself. So welcome to the wonderful world of the Trinity. Read Hebrews 9.14 for my brethren. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself. How did he do it? Through the blood of Christ with the eternal spirit. Now either he did it by himself, so the spirit is one with him, or we have a contradiction in the book of Hebrews. Since none of us think the book of Hebrews contradicts, it's time for you to now to worship the Holy Spirit as your Jehovah God, one with the Father Amen. and the Son. Right. Now, the second thing you did, which again astonished me, you go to the passage where evil spirits possess a man and torment him in order to refute the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells believers simultaneously. Apart from the implicit blasphemy, trying to liken unclean spirits to the spirit indwelling people, that actually proves my point, because that shows you it's not natural for anyone other than God to possess someone because when they do, that brings destruction and not God's favor. So I'm going to repeat my challenge again. Show me where a righteous angel, not an evil, wicked spirit, contrary to God's will, indwells any believer with God's approval like the Holy Spirit does. That's number one. Number two, show me any righteous angel that can indwell a group of believers simultaneously with God's favor. Please show me that. And that's in John 14, 16. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So what angel is omnipresent? Are you saying this angel is omnipresent? The demons you were talking about had to be multiplied demons inside of a single person. Oh, it wasn't one tormenting them. Not one demon inside of many people. The Holy Spirit is one spirit inside of many people. Amen. Please answer the questions we're setting up before you today. I think you maybe are used to debating those who are not as well prepared as us. We're used to your arguments. We defend the deity of the Holy Spirit. Actually, in the same way you defend the deity of Jesus, one being with the Father, we showed you their same attitude attributes in creation and speaking the word in salvation we showed you that they're given oneness in the name one name jehovah matthew 28 19 and 20 we showed you in first john 5 7 the, the proper translation is these three bear witness they are one we showed you in creation that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and we know that's the word the jesus with the father and then we see in john uh, genesis 1 1 the spirit was over the face of the deep they have never been separate they have been eternal they are not of the same person they are three separate persons but one being one divine essence one god Deuteronomy 6.4 Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear O Israel the Lord thy God is one Achad your bitarianism, the two, is a false belief of pagan deity. That is a belief that has been handed out through other pagans like Jehovah Witnesses and so forth saying that the Trinity is pagan you'll never find a doctrine anywhere in history where there is three separate co-equal person sharing one divine nature. That is not a triad of Babylon. That is not a triad of Hinduism with Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. This is a unique doctrine that was revealed by the Holy Spirit. I know you're passionate. You're excited. Praise the Lord. The fire and spirit. I want to keep it scriptural. So let's go. Now, again, I challenge you to show me where any created angelic being is said to be eternal. We gave you a passage, Hebrews 9.14. It says, through the eternal spirit. The word eternal is only used of God, such as in 1 John 1, 2, where it says, The eternal life with the Father, we have beheld Him. That's the Son. In 1 John 5, 20, we are told, This is the true God and eternal life. So show me where the adjective eternal is used for a mere created angelic being as it's used for the Spirit. I also showed you the Spirit is the creator, sustainer of creation. According to scripture, Jehovah alone creates. For the spirit to create, either he's Jehovah or you have a contradiction. You never answer that. Isaiah 40 verse 13, we are told that no one can instruct or teach or guide the spirit because he's omniscient. Show me where created angelic being is said to be omniscient like the spirit is. Read Isaiah 40 13 one more time, if you don't mind. So none of the points we raised, the pastor and I, have been refuted. So this is why when he said... Let's go to Ezekiel 1. Here are creatures that are spirits. I never said that spirits are not created. I said the Holy Spirit is never said to be created. The Holy Spirit is said to be eternal. 
Can you show me where Gabriel is set to be eternal? Can you show me where Michael is set to be eternal? Can you show me an angel who is not the angel of God, by the way, which again surprised me that you would cite the angel of God. If you want, let's debate the identity of the angel of God, and I'll show you it's Jesus Christ as the messenger of God who is God in his pre-human existence. So quoting Exodus 23 doesn't prove your case, it proves my position. I'm asking for the evidence where a created angelic being is said to be eternal, and where the spirit is said to be a ministering angel. I haven't seen the evidence. And that's interesting, as he said, you went to history books, but you started the debate by saying, search the scriptures. All I've been doing is giving you scriptures, and you gave me historical references. So let's stick with the scriptures, because the scriptures are God-breathed, not those fallible, uninspired historical references. Read for me Isaiah 40, verse 13. Who hath directed the spirit? Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord? Or be his counselor, hath taught him. So what is the implication? The Spirit of the Lord is God. So you don't need to teach the Spirit anything because how can you teach someone who knows everything something he already knows? Right. Now can they show that said about a created angelic spirit being? Now I have more to say, but in reality you haven't rebutted anything. So now Pastor, if you want to say anything, uh, because I mean, really they didn't rebut, rebut anything. So I guess this part of the debate has been won. The Holy Spirit is your God, so you need to bow to Him and worship Him as one with the Father and the Son. Amen. And I want you to understand what I'm saying, gentlemen, is that we love you and care about you, okay? So we don't want the truthishness before us. So when you look at the writings of Scripture, you have to have a holistic system that works together. And so let's just go back to some of these passages that I think we're missing each other on. When we say the eternal spirit, how do you think an angel can be eternal like God is eternal? Let's just stop and think about that. God is eternal as an attribute. An angel is a created being. It is not eternal. We can have an eternal life moving forward, but we had a beginning and existence. God's omni-attribute, all-powerful, all-knowing and everywhere, is in his, is, it's based in his internality, his eternality. You have to see in the Bible an angel that can do everything an eternal God can do, which is a divine attribute. So let me just make this very clear. You have not done better than pagans. You've actually introduced more pagan deities into your belief system. So not only have you deified uh, uh, this angel, but you are also now required to worship this angel and give it the same honor that you would give the Holy Spirit. Because the name of God is the only name that can be worshipped. And we went to Isaiah chapter 40. He created the world alone. And Job said, by the Spirit, he did that. And you see that in Genesis 1. So you now have to bow down to your Creator, an angel. Welcome to Jehovah Witnesses. That's what they believe about Jesus, a second created God that they have to worship. Another thing that you've done, not getting away from paganism, but reintroducing it, is you've introduced confusion into the Godhead or the God nature. When we say that God became flesh and manifested among us in 1 Timothy 3.16, we don't mean that's the Father. We mean that's the Son. Go back to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Proston theon, in the Greek. He was facing God. And then in the next part, he was God. Not the God he was facing, but he is God in nature as the Father is God. That's why when you go down to John 1.18, it says, No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only Son, who is at the Father's right hand, has made it known to us. So either you have a contradiction about seeing the Father, or you acknowledge that it's Jesus that we've seen. And in that same sense, what I would say is the hiddenness of the Holy Spirit through the pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day, the Holy Spirit uh, coming upon as the Ruach of the prophets. This was hidden. It was a mystery. And Jesus reveals him fully at his baptism and then at his resurrection when he breathes upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit in John chapter 20. He did not say receive an angel. It was receiving the third person that he had already described in the Great Commission of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you want to add a last thing for the minute we have here? Shalom. Thank you so much, um, Metro Praise International. We're going to move on here um, to the presentation on salvation. So biblical salvation. Can we take a five-minute stretch break? Yes. But, yeah. uh, we're going to go back to the normal format. Fifteen minutes, and we can't go anywhere f f further than that. And then ten minutes for the final words so that we can be able to just get this all done properly. Yeah. When he had shared about having a dialogue afterwards, did you mean afterward? Yeah. Or you didn't mean a cross-examination? 
uh, if they want to do it afterwards because they set up the format. Are you guys familiar with cross Yeah, so Jose, Jose presented uh, yeah, something where he wanted to do like an open dialogue at the end. After we done finished, right? We but like in what format? Would it be like question and answer or is it will we talking? Yeah, you want to ask us questions, we answer, we ask you questions? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So did you all still want the rebuttal for the angel? No, no. The, the, so we can skip it to Saturday. Right. We're going right. to well, take a 10 minute break and then come back. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let me make sure this line is still on. Okay, three. Yeah. I'm not even going to be on the panel. So. Yeah, yeah. So it did, it did amplify that. But if you want to join us now, I think that would be. We're coming back, people. Salvation is next. Salvation is next. Because it's not getting any. We just got the signal back just now. Right, no, no. It just stopped when I, I got to it. When no, I came over to it, it just stopped. It, it keeps going in and out more. It's been, it's been doing that all the time. That's fine. That's fine. Like for 15 minute intervals. Where it's going out. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So we got to get that figured out because over here the Wi Fi is weak. We got to go closer to the modem. All right, if you want to move it. You, yeah, you can you try and move just it. take it off the charger. It don't need to be charged anymore, does it? Uh, let me see where the bright battery is at. 80%. You're fine. Just, just, we got to bring it over here so that we can have enough room to be able to see everybody because nobody's going through that part with the traffic anyway. Yeah. Because they're broadcasting from theirs also. We got to make sure that we at least have a strong signal. The signal's, the signal's not strong right here. So then, you know how when we usually be trying to get up on the signal up in here and we be on the Wi-Fi and it's still be kind of messing up? That's what it is. Huh? I don't think yours is really doing anything. The thing is that when you have some people that's on a broadcast, Oh, I see. Watching the same broadcast. Yeah, because. Well, no, I know that was through the angel. No, no, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Where you said where there's all one person. No, no, no. I'm saying your belief, you know, not to be rude, but I'm actually a student as well. I'm learning to try to put my finger on where did this come from? I don't know why. But, like, in a way, like, how did you get another person? Like, who was the first one to say, hey, this is the let me sit down and go over with you. I can go the same way. Well, I mean, the main story going to salvation now. Right, right. But I, I, I can tell you, Exodus 23 chapter, it said. I don't mean the Bible. I mean, like, when you were listening to teach, who taught you? Who was the teacher? Did you listen to Bowie? Were you on the Bowie? Well, I started with Bowie, yes. Okay. And who did Bowie learn from? You started from a guy named, uh, what was his name? Uh, Stern. 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 Did you have to understand for us, it's quite an exciting history. Of what we would call the VHI, the Black Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a lot of history with that in New York, in Chicago. But you have to go back to Israel from the beginning because that's where it's from. Yeah, I know that's hard. Not just this. We say yeah. VHI, you talk about America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but the Lord opened our eyes and said, See, that's the thing. You have to say, like, well, see, I have an experience because you have to find the history. It's not like, I can't say no more. No, because God is really I can show you some traditions now that people still have in black churches that was given to them by the slave man. You just have to get out of it. Yeah, my thing is not so much about that. That's very interesting. My thing is, the system of belief that you have now, it's codified now in your guys' teaching. So it looks like a generation. That's that 50, yeah.
Let's sit down. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk. When we run into salvation, I just want to ask this last question, if that's okay. We can do the eight times that we can go straight to seven. Let me ask this question. This question. I gave you some I gave you some right Let me ask you one question. Because of what you guys believe, you were given Sunday as a day of worship. That's let, let, let me just add, no, 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 hold on. We was given the same thing, right? Yes, yes. And we, we sat here, we're going to go by what, by what the Bible says. Yeah. Right? So what kept you in Sunday when you know where it came from, as, yeah. as opposed to saying we should be out of it? All days are created equal in my book, according to Paul. But here's my thing, not even all the but my thing is to understand history. So when he goes to these dictionaries, he can see an Athanasius. Oh, I'm not reading these Athanasius. That's one of the things I see. That's one of the things I see. My question is, when you go back to the church history, and I have no more of a problem. Like Athanasius to me was probably a black man. He was from Northern Africa. You know, so I see the colors, the, the different groups working together. My thing is, where is this teaching in church history? That's, that's all I was asking. I'm sorry. But it's in the Bible. But it's just something that tell me. The book say. In Romans the third chapter, that the oracles of God are given to who? Israel. So, and it also says salvation is of the Jews. So you have to know who the Jew is, you have to know who Israel is, in order to get salvation. We're ready to get into it. Okay? okay. okay. So right back on. I just wanted to know some of the history. You know, just learn about it. That's my whole topic. Yeah. But then, this is only brother. He 
showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Jacob's name was later changed to Israel. I'm pretty sure you all know that he was. He have not dealt so with any nation. So he have not dealt so with any nation except Israel. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So we can't go to the Italians that has not been taught by a Jew to learn anything that has to do with this Bible. It has to come directly from a Jew that is set in stone. That's in here. It's in your book too. Are you finished with that? Yep. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envy. What, where you at? First Peter, chapter one. Oh, chapter one. Oh, sure. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Go to verse, verse one. Pick up verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus there Christ. There we go. Okay. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So Peter's a Jew. Yes, sir. All right, keep going. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Um, uh, that's the words coming from that brother. Keep going. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had forgotten us again unto the lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, mm -hmm. people. to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. So now, let me just jump in there, because he says he, he, he got he gotten us to, again to a lively hope. So it ain't no one save, always save. You hope to get salvation, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me jump in. Uh, give me Romans 10 and verse 1. And when you get there, brother, go ahead. Brethren. We're about to jump into this salvation the real way. Let's do this. Brethren. Romans 10 and verse 1. Go ahead. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Wait, so his prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So they have a zeal of God. They are passionate about serving their God, but it is not according to knowledge. Keep going. But they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Wait, wait. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, which is the real way that you're supposed to get salvation. And they going about to establish their own righteousness, saying, oh, you're going to get salvation this way. Keep going. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now keep going. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. True statement. Keep going. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Keep going. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from heaven. So he said, look, there ain't gonna be no excuse. He said, look, it's not what you say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Go get Christ down from above. Keep going. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Go ahead. But what saith it? What saith it? The word is not. Nigh thee. The word is nigh thee. So it is no way where you cannot get around this word. Right? Keep going. Even in thy mouth. It's in thy mouth. And in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now keep going. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, skip down to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep going. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? That's a good question, right? Keep going. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So how they go call on him which they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Keep going. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How they going to hear without that right preacher? Keep going. And how shall they preach except they be sent? So now, how do you know he's sent? Because the preacher of the Lord is going to tell you, keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, that is correct. That is how you get salvation. Revelation 22nd chapter. Revelation 22. And verse 14. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to the tree of life. Who is the tree of life? Jesus. Jesus. But back up to the first, back to verse 12. Let's see what it says real quick. And behold, uh -huh. I come quickly, mm -hmm. and my reward is with me. Has anybody got that reward yet? No, sir. 
Has anybody that ever died come out of that grave and went to heaven? No, no sir. <laughs> and if we are in agreement on that, I'm good. <laughs> but if you say your salvation is now, why would the book say he that it go to the end the same thing you say? Right. Let's look at something. Let's go to uh, Joel second chapter. Joel two. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Joel 2 and verse 1. When you get into it. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Uh -huh. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord come. Uh -huh. But it is not at hand. Now, we talk about the second coming of the Lord. That day is not came yet. Okay, go ahead. A day of darkness and of gloominess. Mm -hmm. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Mm -hmm. As the morning spread upon the mountains. Mm -hmm. A great people and a strong. Mm -hmm. There have not been ever the light. Mm -hmm. Neither shall be any more after it. Uh -huh. Even to the years of many generations. Now, has this happened yet? So, no. We know that's future. Okay, skip down to verse 11. I mean, verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. Mm -hmm. The heavens shall tremble. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon shall be dark. Mm -hmm. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Mm -hmm. For his camp is very great. Mm -hmm. For he is strong that executeth his word. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Mm -hmm. And who can abide it? Now, who can abide that day? Those that keep his commandments. Because if you're not keeping the Lord's commandments, you are his enemy. That's right. And let's see what happens to his enemy. Skip down to verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, mm -hmm. blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Mm -hmm. The sun shall be turned into darkness mm -hmm. and the moon into blood uh -huh. before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord uh -huh. shall be delivered. Wait a minute now. You got to call his name when? At the end, At the end of the time. Because that's what he said. He that shall do it to the end shall be saved. But if you don't do what he say do, he going to tell some people, hey, have it, they're going to come to him and say, have we, have we did all these wonderful works in your name? You, go, you know what he's going to say? Depart from, from me. From me. Work workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin. sin. That's right. What is sin? Got to say it. First John 3 and 4. So the, the, that's the biblical, let's get the biblical definition of sin. Because that shouldn't even be an issue in any debate when it comes to the Bible. But apparently it is because most people think the Holy Ghost is going to guide them to do everything that they do. And all they got to do is follow what the Lord say. And breaking a commandment is not a problem. First, first, uh, first John 3 first John, and verse 4. Three, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin mm -hmm. transgresseth also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the law. Wait a minute, that ain't nailed to the cross? No. So if, if a person can say, I am not a sinner because I don't have no law, then what is the transgression of the law? <laughs> sin. sin. And if you are transgressing, you ain't got nothing to say to the Lord when he comes, because you're going to get judged just like in a court of law, you get judged on what? The law on the books. And, right? And in the first chapter, uh, it say, uh, verse 4, it say, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So now, if somebody's telling you the truth, that person been sent. If somebody's not telling you the truth, they are not sent from the Lord God of Israel. Right. God is fine. And I got a precept on that. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Acts 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 19. Get right to it. And I will show wonders in heaven above, mm -hmm. and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. We just read that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. So it, it, that day is coming. Go ahead. And watch what happened on that day. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Wait a minute, I got saved back in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> we talking future, right? Mm -hmm. And we talking about a set time when the Lord going to save his people. Because that's what his name means, save it. When he come, he will save those that do his will. And let's clear up one thing for her. You say black Hebrew is alike. Black is color. We are the children of Israel. We are the lost tribes of Israel. We have not located the tribes until the Lord come and redeem us. Mm -hmm. And we're not the Israelite group that say only Israel going to make salvation. That's not the case. Isaiah 56 in verse 6. We're going to get the Salvation is for anyone who grab a hold to the covenant, not just for us. We just the teachers of it. We're supposed to be an example, but we are not. We are 
hidden prison houses. We yeah. are the, the first to kill. We are mm -hmm. the, the last hire, mm -hmm. first fire. We on the bottom of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. We the bottom mm -hmm. feeders because we did not hearken to the voice of the Lord. Right. Isaiah 56, verse 6. My soul, the sons of the strangers that join themselves so the, to the Lord. The sons of the strangers, anybody outside the nation of Israel, Africans, Hamites, whatever they want to say. I know you guys been dealing with some folks. We ain't them. We right. true keepers of them. Keep going. To serve him and to love the name of the Lord. To be his servants, everyone that keeps the Sabbath from polluting. They keep his what? They keep Sunday. the Sabbath. They keep Sunday. They keep the Sabbath. The first day of the week? No. The seventh day of Sabbath. And take the hold of my covenant. Keep going. Even them will I bring into my holy mountain. Even them, he's going to bring them well? To my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. But mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Some people. All oh, people. So we're not affiliated with the black people or Israelites. That's not us. This is the church of Israel. I got a precept on that. Give me uh, Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Let me get that Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. So the soul that sinned, it shall die. So we talking about that soul, that one that you, the, the soul, the, the sin, the, the, the Father ain't going to be responsible for the sins of the Son. The Son ain't going to be responsible for the sins of the Father. How you going to get in that kingdom? You have to follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Give me First Peter 4 and verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. Go ahead. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian. Wait, wait, he's suffering as a Christian. What is a Christian? Somebody that follows Christ, right? Go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. That's something you should not be ashamed about. Go ahead. Let him glorify God on this behalf. Go ahead. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Wait, wait, it started at the house of God? It started in the church. Go ahead. And if it first began at us. If it first began at us. We're supposed to be the ones that really following this thing, right? If it first began at us, go ahead. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Ain't that so? So go that's ahead. the question we pose to you guys. We don't know what your belief is on salvation. But we pose that question to you. And keep going. Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Mm. But now let's look at something else. Go to John 6, chapter and see when this salvation is going to come. So make sure everybody know when it's coming. Because we read about the last days when the Lord return. He's going to deliver his people. Okay, John 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, verse 30, 38. For I come down from heaven, mm -hmm. not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Mm -hmm. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, mm -hmm. that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, mm -hmm. but should raise it up at the last day. And when is it going to be raised? At the last, last day. day. That's the day of your salvation. Everybody that's ever been in the grave still in the grave. Yep. That's why we don't understand why people go to field, uh, uh, cemeteries and talk to the ground. Because <laughs> the dead know nothing. Okay, that's the next verse. And this is the will of him that sent me, mm -hmm. that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him mm -hmm. may have everlasting life, mm -hmm. and I will raise him up at the last day. Let's get down to verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, mm -hmm. and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, how are you drawn to the Lord? By his word, right. right? It's the word that begets you. And when you are begetting by the word, you change. And you change your lifestyle. You start keeping what? Yeah, the right. Just that simple. Okay. Right. Let's get down to what was the next one? Uh, 54? Who yeah. shall eat of my flesh and drink of my blood yeah. hath eternal life? Yeah. And I will raise him up at the last day. Ain't that something? But mm -hmm. well, let's see what else with that with that eternal life. Let's get down to verse 63. Time. Time. Oh, okay. Time. okay, we got time. Now we're on to Metro Praise International. <laughs> we're not gonna go for any more than 15 minutes, and then if within y'all choice. If y'all want to do a cross-examination, we can do that. Or we can do the final words for each side. No, yeah, we'll do the final words. You want to do the final each. words and then we go yeah. cross yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. All right. All right, we ready? One, two, 
One, two. Okay. All right, so we believe in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. You are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we do not believe we are saved by anything other than faith in Jesus Christ. And then it says in Ephesians 2, 10, that you are the workmanship or handiwork of God created, past tense, in Christ Jesus to do good works. What do you have first, a birth or a child learn arithmetic? You can only have the birth first, then the child learns arithmetic. You have to be born again first to do good works. You have to be saved and recreated. John 3, 3 says, for uh, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, please get ready for uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, because you guys are talking about the law as if you're following it today. So I want to help you out here today. If you think you're following the law of Moses, we're going to go through some of them. I have all 613 here on my computer, and I've broken them down in different categories. So we're going to see how you're doing with Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Good sir, please read us. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. If they're under the works of the law, what are they under? The curse. So if someone here says they're under the works of the law, what are they under? The curse. Okay, for it is written. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to them. Cursed is how many? All. Cursed is how many? All. Everyone. Everyone that continueth not in how many things? All things. How many things? All things. So everyone who does not continueth in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11. But that no man is justified. How many men are justified by the book no of the man. law? How no. many? No man. No man. That, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. It is evident today, and I will show you, you cannot follow the law, 613, every one of them today. You are under the condemnation of that law. Continue. For the, for the just shall live by faith. How many will live by faith? For the just. The just. So if you want to be just, you have to do it by faith. We're getting some feedback here. I don't know if it can handle. Keep it away from them. Just keep the mic right away. Okay. We are justified by faith. The just shall live by what? By faith. Verse 12. And the law is not of? Faith. What is the law not of? Faith. Faith. Keep reading. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Shall live in them. So how can I live in obedience to Christ if the law puts me under a curse? We must have a redemption from the law of Moses and brought into a new covenant. Read verse 13, please. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. He made a curse for us. What was he for us? A curse. Amen. Keep going. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we, come on, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through works of the law? Through faith. How do we receive the promise of Abraham? Through faith. Through faith. Now I want to break down 613 laws for you in categories that would help you. There are 22 laws that have the Hebrew word olam. That means forever. <coughs> they are commanded to be done forever. 22 of them. Let's go through just a few to see if you are keeping these laws today. Are you today sacrificing? Are you today bringing first fruits to the temple? Today, is there a table of showbread in the tabernacle? Are you in a priesthood that blows temp uh, trumpets? Are you offering the priests certain offerings? Are you giving them the sacrifices of animals? And are the ashes of a heifer being brought before you? If you say Jesus fulfilled these, then you just made our point, sir. You are not saved by the law. You are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Unto, as we'll get to in just a moment, the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the fulfillment of the 613 laws. Now, those 22 you cannot fulfill, but maybe 20% tw maybe of them. Another 29 commandments are given with the word throughout your generations or forever. Once again, you can only keep a quarter of those. I don't see tassels here on your robe. I don't see you enacting a civil law for homicide, safe cities. I don't see that you are today honoring the Lord with the sideburns. Uncap you're supposed to allow the sideburns to grow up. These laws to you are a conviction because the Bible says that the one who does not continue it and all of them is under the curse of the law. And then let's go to Sam with the law of Christ in Galatians. Just for the record, 
I'm under the assumption because as Pastor addressed it, you are promoting observance of the law of Moses. That's my assumption because you talked about the Sabbath and so forth and so on. So I'm operating under that assumption that when you say the law, you mean the law of Moses is still binding on followers of Jesus Christ. Because like I said, we're learning what you believe as we go along. So with that assumption, I think the pastor here, here did an excellent job of showing that it is impossible to live the law to God's satisfaction to obtain immortal life. I'm going to add to that. Let's go to Acts 15. Let's read verses 1 to 11. Here you have a group of Jews. Because remember earlier, our brothers in humanity over here said that since the law has been entrusted to the Jews, then we need to hear it from a Jew. Well, you don't get more Jewish than Peter. And Peter says, the law of, the law of Moses saves no one. You are purified by faith by the grace of Jesus Christ, not by the law of Moses, which is a yoke that neither they nor their ancestors were evil to keep. Acts 15, verses 1 to, 1 to 11. Read it for me, my friend. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the, unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they, and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So you guys represent the Pharisees. We represent Paul and Barnabas. Let's see who Peter agrees with. Peter and the apostles and elders came together for, for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, Bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference, and put no difference between us and them by purifying, the, purifying their hearts by faith. By faith and keeping the law, or by faith? By faith. Now notice what he says about the law of Moses, which you're trying to enjoin upon us. Gentiles are not ethnically Jewish. Keep reading. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. So why are you trying to tempt God by forcing us Gentiles to keep a law that even the Jews say neither us nor our fathers have ever been able to keep, which is why we are saved how? By faith. Well, keep reading. That we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. If that wasn't clear, let's see what Paul says to a group of Jews in Acts 13, 38 to 39. Does he agree with our brothers in humanity here, or does he agree with what we believe, because what we believe comes from them, not from the traditions of men, or twisting scriptures to our shame and destruction? Acts 13, 38 to 39. Here's what Paul says to Jews. Acts 13, 38 to 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things. By him all that believe and keep the law? Nope, by those who believe. By believing in Jesus, you are justified, and continue. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Sure sounds like Paul is preaching what Pastor Joe is preaching, not what our brothers in humanity happen to be preaching. But then again, if that's not clear, let's see what Paul says to Gentiles in Acts 16, 30 to 31. Acts 16, 30 to 31. All right, verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. That must be a typo, because Paul should have nope. said, Believe and keep the law, and you and your household will be saved. Huh? Why does Paul sound like Pastor Joe and not our brothers in humanity in the table over there? It's from the Bible. So let's go to Galatians 3, verses 1 and 2. Let's see how a man is justified, how a man is saved. How does a man receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that leads to eternal life? Galatians 3, verses 1 and 2. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, 
or by the hearing of faith? So according to them, it's by the works of law. Paul says, no way, Jose, it is by hearing the gospel and believing in Jesus Christ. In case we didn't get it, now read Galatians 3, verses 5 to 9. Just in case we didn't get it. He that therefore, he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So how do you get the Holy Spirit by and faith. the miracles? By faith. All right, now continue reading. How about Abraham? Was Abraham justified by keeping the law, which came 430 years after him? Nope. Read 6 to 9. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now that must have been a typo. Even as Abraham believed God and kept the law of Moses, which came 430 years later. No, on. no typo. All right, keep going. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed, shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful labor in. Now read 14 real quickly because my time is running out. Read verse 14. 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through faith. Through faith. Not law. Not faith in law. Through faith in Jesus Christ, who completes and perfects the law, and it's his righteousness that I obtain by faith that justifies me before God. Another thing I've noticed is that you keep emphasizing the future aspect of salvation. And I don't think any of us deny there's a future aspect to our salvation. Because after all, what is Christ saving us from? The wrath to come. But we can know right now by faith that when that day of wrath comes, we will escape it because we have trusted in Jesus Christ. Go to Romans 5 verse 1. So I appreciate you emphasize the future aspect, but let's emphasize the present reality of the salvation that assures us that when that day comes... God's wrath will not fall on me because the blood of Jesus Christ covers me to his glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Romans 5.1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have or we shall have. We have. What kind of peace do you have if you still fear God's wrath to come? No peace. So that means true peace comes from knowing without doubt. When that day comes, God's wrath will not be poured on you because you have trusted in Jesus Christ. Verses 9-11 to Verse 9. Much more than being not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Shall we be reconciled or are we already reconciled right now? We were. Shall we be justified or already justified right now? Right now. Keep going. We were enemies. We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Now we receive, or we shall receive the atonement that appeases God's wrath, guaranteeing us that when that day comes, God's wrath will not be poured upon us. We receive it. So then, of course, we don't deny there's a future aspect to our salvation, because after all, God came... And the person of the Son to save us from the day of wrath. That day is future. But I can know right now by trusting in Christ, not the works of the law, that day of wrath will not affect me. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Read it for me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain Salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the blood of Jesus that gives us the assurance of that day. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Now, according to Christ, if I believe in him, shall I ever die? John 11, 25 to 27. I'll read it. Jesus answered her and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who believeth in me and lives shall never die. But according to you, someone who believes in Christ can die if he fails to observe the law of God according to his satisfaction. So your gospel is a different gospel from the one preached by Jesus in John 11, 25 to 27. Pastor, I'll give it to you. Yes, and so we clearly state what the law of Christ is. You think we're lawless? No, we're under the law of Christ. Romans 10, 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. The law is believe in Christ and obey him. And that is the law of Christ in Galatians 6, 3. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, he is nothing. He deceives himself. In so doing, fulfill the law of Christ. Our, I'm sorry, our clock was a little different than that. No, no, Thank no, you. Y'all got 25 seconds. It's okay. 20 seconds. She got eager. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so are we going to do the cross examination then? Let's right. end the ten minutes and do this yeah. open up. Yes, yeah. I think yeah. they respond with yeah. time to be responded. Yeah. They cross. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So final words. I guess we have your call. Let me go first. Bro. Let me go first to James one, first chap chapter one. <laughs> Because the bottom line is, you know, if you just have to believe it, just have faith, that is not enough. Bring this mic down a little bit, uh, Richard. Feel free to set the mics and stuff, because they're off. Can we get them all together? Is that okay? Well, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, this one just, just if I got to have that far back, that's not good. Yeah, right. But let me go to James 1, because I'm losing time. James 1. No, we, I'm so sorry. So can you start this time over again? I really want to take care of the mics, because it's, it's causing us. Yeah, I don't want to take over in your house either, but I don't think that's fair to you or to us. Okay, okay. Yes. appreciate it. Okay. James 1 and verse 14. Okay, we started over. Do you have another You have another wired box. Why are you so demanding? <laughs> <laughs> James 1, chapter 14. No, no, no. 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 James 1, chapter 1. And, uh, I'm sorry. James 1. Is it James 1 or James 2? No, no. James 2 and verse 14. James 2, James verse 14. 14, chapter 14. James chapter 2, verse 14. Go ahead. What doeth it profit, my brethren, mm -hmm. though a man say he hath faith mm -hmm. and hath not works? So like, what works is he talking about? Just believe? Is that all you gotta do? But look what he look what he's gonna tell you. Go ahead. Can faith save him? Can faith save him? Like, that's all you need right here. There's some faith that you're gonna get in. And when the Lord comes with his wrath, you just gonna pass him because you, oh, I, you believed in my name. That ain't gonna be enough. This, the devil believed that. He read that earlier. Right? Go ahead. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, mm -hmm. and one of you say unto them, mm -hmm. Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, mm -hmm. notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, mm -hmm. what doeth it profit? Uh -huh. Even so faith, mm -hmm. if it have not works, it's dead, being mm -hmm. alone. Bottom line, right? Yeah. But now, let's look at something else. Let's go to uh, Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2. Because you said if you, you don't have to fear nothing with the Lord, then you should be able to get, you know, if you don't believe in nothing, let's see what the Bible says. Philippians 2 and verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, mm -hmm. as ye have always obeyed. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, always what? Obeyed. Okay, go ahead. Not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence. Mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation uh -huh. with fear and trembling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, so if I know I'm working my salvation out, I'm doing his will and his word, and I'm still worried out I, I might fall one day, because Paul even tell you something. He said, what? I might be a castaway, right? Yeah. Let's go read that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, chapter. 1 Corinthians 9. And we're going to pick it up in verse 24. Because if you got peace and you say, how can you be cast away? Didn't Moses tell the Lord to block me out your book? Mm -hmm. And Moses said, no, I'm going to block those out that don't do what I say mm -hmm. out this book. Yeah. Know ye not uh -huh. that they which run in a race run off, uh -huh. but one receiveth the prize. Mm -hmm. So run that ye may obtain. Mm -hmm. And every man that striveth for the mastery mm -hmm. is tempered in all things. Uh -huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Go ahead. But we are incorruptible. We uh -huh. are incorruptible. We, we and, and incorrupt. Go ahead. I therefore so run, mm -hmm. not as uncertain, uh -huh. so fight. Uh -huh. I, not as one that beateth the air. See, I ain't fighting with the wind now. I'm making myself do what I know what I got to do. Keep the commandments. Okay, go ahead. But I keep under my body mm -hmm. and bring it. Get too close to the mic. Bring the mic down. But I keep uh -huh. under my body. Bring the mic down. Okay, go ahead. And bring it into subjection. Uh -huh. Lest that by any means mm -hmm. we have... To when others, I have preached to when others, I have preached to others, uh -huh. I myself should be a castaway. How could you be a castaway? If you fall from the truth, because when Paul said, if you break the law, you know, he's saying, you, you, uh, you're a sinner, right? But now, what do you say? Let's go wrong with the seventh chapter. Romans well, seven. And just see what Paul say about the uh, word of God. We're going to put that mic down. Just use this mic. Yes, Lord. Romans seven. <laughs> You say yes, Lord. Romans <laughs> <laughs> uh, 7 and 7. 
What should we say then? Uh -huh. Is the law sin? Mm -hmm. God forbid. So now y'all make it seem like the law is a sin. Yeah. What's wrong with thou should not kill? Right. Thou should not steal. Thou should not commit adultery. But no, I got faith. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, I'm gonna have your wife tonight, and I'm going to be faithful tomorrow. <laughs> right? But if I got works, my works going to keep me from going to your house to mess with your wife. Right? Go ahead. Nay, uh -huh. I have not known sin, but by the law. Uh, but, but, known sin, but by what? Is this the New Testament? Yes, is this is. after Jesus' resurrection? Yes, sir. Is this after he can sit on the right hand of the Father? Yes, Why are we still talking about sin? Mm. That's works, right? Okay, go ahead. By thy known lusts, uh -huh. except the law had said, mm -hmm. thou shalt not covet. Uh -huh. But sin, mm -hmm. taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Mm -hmm. For without the law, sin was dead. Uh -huh. Father was alive without the law once. Mm -hmm. But when the commandment came, uh -huh. sin revived, mm -hmm. and I died. Uh -huh. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, mm -hmm. I found to be unto death. Do you know what? Kill that old sinful body, That's right? right. Okay, go ahead. For sin, uh -huh. taking occasion by the commandment, mm -hmm. deceived me, uh -huh. and by it slew me. Uh -huh. Wherefore the law is holy, uh -huh. and the commandment holy, uh -huh. and just, and good. Yeah. Ain't that something? First John 2, four, uh, verse 4. Then I'm going uh, to read verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual, mm -hmm. but I am carnal, sold under sin. Uh -huh. Now, First John 2. He that saith, I know him, mm -hmm. and keepeth not his commandments, uh -huh. is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Whoa. Is that Peter? John? Paul? Uh, who? Also, John the Revelator. Yes, it is. And, and let's go read some else John the Revelator said, because you all said that you don't have to worry about nothing as long as you, you know, uh, born again and have faith. This is what I'm reading here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It say, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Mm -hmm. And they were judged, every man according to their works, not their faith. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Mm -hmm. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, you better find out what you need to do to get back in the life, was cast into the lake of fire. Now, let me clear up something real quick here because they said when Jesus died, uh, we still only under the Mosaic law. No, no, we're going to Daniel 9, 9 chapter real quick. I'm going to show you what happened when Jesus was on the cross and when he died. What happened is why, why we don't have to keep some of the Mosaic Levitical priesthood law. Right. And that's Daniel 9. And we're going to pick up at verse 27 just to get right to it and see what happened when Jesus was cut off. I want to 27, but uh, because like I said, we got more time. Read 26, the first part. Go ahead. And after three score and two weeks, mm -hmm. your Messiah be cut off. So now, cut off mean what? Kill, right? Yeah. Now, go to verse 27. They can read that on your own. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the week, mm -hmm. he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So now, if we don't have to sacrifice no animals no more, that's what was nailed to the cross. But let's confirm. Let's go to Matthew 27, chapter. Matthew 27. Because he didn't nail the Sabbath day to the wall, to the cross. He didn't kill that. Only thing he killed was the, the, the animal sacrifice. But the animals, he never warned them in the first place. Matthew 27 and verse 51. No, verse 50. Go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, mm -hmm. yielded up the ghost. Uh -huh. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Now what that represents, that's where you go into the holy place, right? right. And you bring the sacrifice, but the veil ripped. That's right. Man didn't cut it, the Lord cut it. Right. And it ripped from top to bottom. Go ahead. And the earth did quake, uh -huh. and the rocks rent. Now what happened because of that? Because the Lord ended the Levitical priesthood, which he's going to reinstitute when he comes back. And then the strangers can bring their offering. And now let's go back to Galatians because that's where y'all started. Let's clear up something because I think y'all skipped a lot over there. Yeah. Well, let's let's get real quick in Galatians three. And we're gonna pick up the first one. We gotta find out who Paul talking to. Because Paul's the Israelite talking to the Galatians. Galatians three and one. Go ahead. Oh, foolish Galatians, uh -huh. who have bewitched you mm -hmm. that ye should not obey the truth? Mm -hmm. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, who 
crucified among you. Go ahead. This only what I learned of you. Mm -hmm. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law uh -huh. or by the hearing of faith. Now what law is he talking about? We got to find out because yes. he ain't talking about all the law. He's going to talk about the works of the law. Okay, go ahead. Are you so foolish uh -huh. having begun in the spirit? Mm -hmm. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Now he's talking about some of the flesh, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what are you talking about? Animal sacrifices. They want to still keep the uh, sacrifice. But Jesus ended that. We just read that, right? Now, skip down to uh, the part where you just skipped over. He said, because it was added because of transgression, right? That's so right. what commandments was added because of transgression? Sacrificial law. That's right. Right? So now, we don't have, uh, let's read verse 18. Go ahead. For if the inheritance be of the law, uh -huh. it is no more promise. So if the animal sacrifice to save you, it is no more promise because you got to have faith. Okay, go ahead. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. And what he said, do what I say and walk before me perfect. Right? Go ahead. Wherefore then serveth the law. Uh -huh. It was added because of transgression. Now was the Ten Commandments added because of transgression? No. It was in the beginning. Because the Lord told us, remember the Sabbath day. The Lord gave them all the law. Exactly. Time. Time. transgression meant sacrifices. On the contrary, the law was given not for the sake of sacrifices for transgressions, but the law was given to make known what transgression is. That's exactly what Paul says in Romans chapter 7. Read 7 all the way to 25. What shall we say then? If the law sin, God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. That's what it means the law was given for transgression. To make you know what sin is. You twisted that to say that it was given for the sins committed that needed to be atoned by sacrifices. You can let it work in the law. That's not what we say. saying. That is not what we're saying. That is not what we're saying. Gentlemen, I did not cut you off. Gentlemen, I did not cut you off. Let me repeat what you said. It's recorded. You said that transgression in Galatians 3 meant transgressions in connection with sacrifices for transgressions committed. That's exactly what you said. The Romans 7 says you don't know what you're talking about because that's not what it means by transgression. Let's read it again. What transgressions was the law given to manifest? It was manifested to us that sin is X, Y, and Z. That's what it means that the law is given for transgression, not for sacrifices for transgression. Finish it. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, brought in me all manner. This is the chapter they quoted to prove that Paul says you need to keep the law. Right. The very law that said that ended up killing me dead because of sin in me. Yes, and this is their proof text. Keep reading. reading. Of course. Keep reading because you're going to see it's Jesus, not your law, that saves you if you keep reading to 25. Keep reading. Who is that? 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 Who is Start at verse 9. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You're not reading Romans 7. Oh, excuse me. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. Well, I was alive without the law once. I was alive without the law once. And when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be up to death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. So sin used the law to kill Paul? Yep. So was Paul able to live the law? No. Thank you. Keep reading. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Keep on. Was, was that that which is good made death unto me? God. Well, by the way, pay attention when they laugh, that means they're losing. Because we didn't disrespect them and laugh at them, so we're going to laugh back. <laughs> Keep on. God forbid, that so, sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might have become exceedingly, exceedingly sinful. So what does it mean that 
the law is given for transgression. Sacrifices for transgression or to make known what transgression is? Make known. Thank you. Keep going. For well, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Bam! Right there. I am sold under sin, which is why I cannot keep the law, because it requires someone spiritual to keep it. Now let's continue, my brother. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that do I. That do I. Does that sound like you can keep the law to God's satisfaction? No. Keep on. If then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So Paul says, I have the desire to keep the law, but I will have the power to do that which is good. Therefore, the very chapter you quoted actually proves our point. No man can be saved by the law, which is why he ends it with, Praise be to God, the Father, for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to do for me, which I could not do for myself. So the very chapter you quoted actually proves our point. And you did it with Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Let's go to Philippians 2, 12. Let's read the next verse, which you did not quote. And by the way, for the record, for all of you from Metro Praise, do, you, and do any of you think the law is no good? No. no. Do you think the law is bad? No. Or do you think the law is spiritual and good? Do any of you believe that what's because you're saved by faith, that means you can live lawless? Or do you take that to mean that now that God has saved me and given me the Spirit, I now desire to keep the law to bring Him glory, but not for salvation? Amen. So all you did was attack strong man misrepresenting our position. Amen. Because that's all you can do, because you can't refute us, because we're speaking the truth. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. Does it say work for your salvation? No. Nope. That's how you misread it. Working out is not the same as working for. Working out means make manifest that which is already in you, the salvation of God. Because no. God has saved me, that will be manifested in a transformed life. But let's see how he does it. Let's continue 13, which you did not read. For it is, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good. Bam! If you're born of the Spirit... Who then puts the desire in you to want to live that holy life yeah. and give you the power to do it? Lord. So why did our friend here not quote verse 13? He stopped at verse 12. And then he did the same thing with James 2. I'm here astonished how you quote so many passages out of context. Let's go back and see what James 1 is in context, not taking one or two verses out of context. Let's go to James 2, 14, and read the entire context. Verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save it? For the record, did you remember when Pastor Joe cited to Ephesians 2, 8 to 10? Let me remind you what he cited at the beginning of his talk. He said, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. But then he read verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's all that James is saying. That if you're truly saved by grace through faith, that will result in a transformed life of obedience to good works. So how does James 2 refute us when we actually amen James all the way to glory? If you truly have faith that saves, then that faith that saves will manifest in obedience to the law, not being lawless. So you, all you've done tonight is misrepresent our position because you don't know our position. And if you know our position, then you change your position to worship the Holy Spirit and know the law saves no one but the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, we're almost seven. Okay, let's go back. I want to now quickly. It's not even. It didn't need to, but it's all right because I'm gonna now. I'm gonna go read Romans seven because now it's going to refute you. You want to read now? I'm trying to be a little merciful because I love you. That's all right. Let's go now. Romans seven, start at seventeen. Let's read. Let's read now. Oh, even better. We read 14, 14, but for your sake, we're already 14. Yeah. Right. Well, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Does that help this case or our case? If the law is spiritual, but you're carnal and slave to sin, can you keep that which is spiritual? No, nope. nope. Keep reading. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But then what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law. I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would for the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So does that help this case or our case? 
Keep reading, don't stop. You just let us finish it because I want to see 8.3, what the good news is. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin is well in me. I find that in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yep. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, that I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. To if you are taken captive, how are you free to do the law to God's satisfaction? None. Any, any one of you are all this, right? Any free? And bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the, from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bam! It's Jesus Christ our Lord that saves me, not the law. So read Romans 8 3 so we can end it because we got 30 seconds. Keep reading. 8 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness Glory! of sin. In the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin. In the flesh. The very chapter you wanted me to read proved we're right and you need to repent because we do not teach biblical doctrine. It is Jesus and his blood that saves, not the law. Good luck trying to satisfy God by our own Okay, now we're going to do the cross examination. This is going to go for. So, how, how do you want the format? Do you want to just. We ask the question. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's the way that I prefer it is that the questionnaire directs the questions and the questionee cannot answer a question and can be cut off if the questionnaire wants to continue on. Okay. So it's not my, like if I'm being asked a question, I can't talk for 10 minutes and take the whole time. Right. You can say, thank you. Because uh, in my understanding, the cross-examination is making your point through what I believe, basically. And so it's not my time just to go on and on and on. But if you're abusing the questionnaire, you can ask the moderator for space and say, I'm not giving a chance. Like, uh, say somebody's leading you in a question that keeps wanting you to say, say yes, say yes. At some point, maybe it's not a yes or no question. Like, so, when it, so when that question is asked, we're going to give a two minute uh, limit for the answer. Yeah, something no, 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 let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Because it's getting too far in detail. Because I wasn't prepared like okay. you guys were prepared. Because, I, like I said, from the beginning, I thought this was to deal with young guys and moving yeah. and that's why he wasn't getting involved. Can I apologize for that? Because, like I said, yeah. if, I, if I'd known the pastor was coming, I'd have been sitting down in front of him. Just to let you know, I don't have any prepared speeches. I just want to talk about it. And, 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 like I said, that's what I'm about to do. You know, yeah. you know, I always try to get myself ready for any kind of time. We agree. You accept my apology? Like I said, I accept your apology. Like I said, because I, like I, uh, I, I just don't appreciate him saying, get down and repent, or do this repent. We never said that to you one well, time. No, 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 like I can say, that's an attack mode. Well, like I can say, no, we try to be humble no, and be nice, and then you went there, you went there. Okay. So I would say, I would like to schedule a re-debate, okay. and we do it with me from the beginning, and we start this thing, okay. and we go, and now I know where you start, now I know where you <laughs> at, and you go first, and then I'll go second, okay, we yeah, did first. Do I, do I don't care if it's you, or whole group, 10, 20, no, no, it don't mean. matter. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Did you want the master's or the PhD or is it? No, I actually don't have to. Okay, don't matter. Don't matter. Okay. I'll just have, uh, like I said, you, I'll take you two and my, me and my brother will go with you two. Okay. Beautiful. You? Let's set it up. Yeah. All right, we'll schedule that. For the record, I got angry when you guys started laughing at me. So you started. Oh, you did it first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You started first. Let's not start. We have a record. I have a record. I have a record. There you are. So, so, so. There you are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because I have, I, look, we both, we both have, clear. it was during the Trinity discussion exactly. Exactly. where you where you said that, that we had to worship the Trinity in the way that you all worship, mm -hmm. but, that, but you said that in a way of where it was yeah, like, you, okay, so you, can't, you can't say that you so, have to worship the truth. So then I do say that, that, that it was not necessarily necessary for any laughing to be going on on this side. So with the cross-examination, cross let me, let me just make this clear. With the cross-examination, since we were not able to do it properly when it came down to the 10 minute of final words, we have to do it properly within the cross-examination if we want to be able to reach someone within the different camps. So we can be able to make these points and not necessarily come off as if we're mocking each other within. Okay, do you forgive us? Oh, we forgive seven times seven. Look, 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 no, 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 one thing, one thing that I, one, wait, wait, one thing that I want to say, I, I, I know you guys, one thing that I want to say is this, 
Yeah. The original format of how everything was set up yeah. does not matter from this point on. Yeah, you, we, you, look, we, no, no, we forgive you. Let me finish. Okay. We forgive you or whatever. But I will say this. It's about reaching everybody here yeah. and giving them the actual format yeah. to see something like this. Right. We, you know, we don't see a debate every day. Right. And that's why I said, I accept whatever. Juan called me, whatever. I sure. accept. Let's do it. Okay. But if we're going to really do this thing, yeah. with this cross-examination, I believe we need to do 15, 15, 20, 20. Sure. Okay. However you guys want to do it. Sure. You said when you ask the question, how do you want to do it? You want to ask the question first? Or? Sure. Can we just make sure we're at peace? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I, that's what I you, you have, have no, nothing tendle? to worry about coming yeah. here. Yeah. Can we end it at Tendal if it's okay? I mean, because it's already not 30. Well, we're going to end it now. Oh. And we'll just be scheduled to start from scratch. That's fine. Yeah. 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 And that way we know the format next time around. All right, you got it. And that way we're good. And we know we're going to know about each other, so we have more quick preparation on the church. And we can do it in the church, too. Or when there's more reliable sound equipment. Maybe your sexual. Well, we'll say, I'll straighten this out because this is a, it's not our church, and we don't want to come into your church and we don't do any defilement, but we don't want you to come to our church and do any defilement. This is a neutral center here. It's free to us that we own it, so I said we do that. Can we discuss the next debate? Yeah. Why not? Can we do that? Um, well, maybe informally you can talk to the program. I think we can just go back and forth with email, go over schedules, sit down, how we want to do it. Uh, I, I do have you. Yeah, I want you to. It seems like you and Thank I you have the same me. understanding as the kind of pastor. Yeah, I'm sorry. I understand what you're talking about. I just want to clarify. Find out if I want to stop. Okay. Enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. That's what you went out Okay, so I understand what you're saying. You're going up a level of me being here. So I want to be very clear. I want that to be with anything against you because I thought possibly there was a setup with the recording because I said we don't know their doctrines. Yeah, no, they were to be. I first yeah. had Glenn down there. Yeah. It was just yeah. supposed to be him and Juan yeah. and they were going to be on Facebook and they had nothing to do with the church at all. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me say this as well. Sure. After I first sent this text, and Jose, you remember yeah. this, yeah. when I first sent the text, he sent me something back saying my pastor uh, wanted to give you guys the options, two options. Yeah. Yeah. One of the options included Sam. Yeah. The other option included moving down the line sure. and rescheduling. Sure. Yeah. And neither one of those happened. Yeah. Well, the first one. Well, no, the first one did. Well, wait, the first one did was just Sam. No, but, was Sam. Oh, you thought it was just Sam. Right. Oh, okay. That's what you said in the text. No, no, no. Really? I made a mistake. And I made a mistake. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what we're saying. We, but but that's what we're saying. Just one thing. I'm going to make sure we get that right. It's perfect. I had actually approved it. The idea was we're going to invite Sam. And the reason why he left out me is because I was actually just going to support them. I, I really just got excited while I was here. This was my job. Honestly, this uh, setting up, sitting up here, that was it. Right. So as you can see, when I started preaching, Sam came up to me. So it, it, it was my mistake. So that's why I want to really make sure I'm clear with, with Marvin here that, that I apologize for that. No problem. Because I did engage in the debate. Okay. Okay. No but I don't think he said alone. I think no, he was just... No, he, he, uh, did. he did. He did. I'm not... I'm not uh, he, said, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. But, but it's, 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 it's okay. Like you said, we're good. It's I want to make sure if I apologize <laughs> twice or just once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. The Bible says be at peace with all the things. Exactly. Right, right. No, no, I get it. You said Sam. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. But yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. come with that intention. Yeah. You didn't tell him, hey, you're debating. We right. came and got excited. That's why I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. He got excited when he got here. He said, okay, I'm going to sit down and debate. But you know, Walt was excited since, since I told him. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's yeah, yeah. a good pick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's good. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so what was it on the text? Um, it was, was it wait, that's what was going on. I'm good. I'm good. It was a win. I have no words. So, so basically, okay, so here's what was on the text. We were basically trying to decide on how many people are going to be waiting. And he said, we're going to prepare with our brother Sam. So I assumed that it was Juan, him, and Sam. And that's, and that's what we do. And those were the people that was being sent to add them. So I got into contact with uh, Jose, and Jose was talking the whole time and everything, yeah. and it went away from that. So if I would have been quiet, the word would have been kept. Here's the thing, here's the thing. No, no, here's the thing. 
I didn't have an issue with him. He can't. He can you the pastor of the church. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because check this out, check this out. Okay? So we were going to do the youth thing. And so that's why I said, no, I just said, I will be jumping on you. It took offense to that. And it took offense to it. Like, you guys were trying to over strategize and over strategize. And I get it. No, no, no. Like I said, I'm good. I've been here seven times. Okay, okay. So. Let me get this out of here real quick. So I'm bombing Jarrell's live real quick just to make it clear that we are finishing for right now. But one thing that had to be made clear to them is that this is something that would be a respectful debate just from both sides and what have you. So next time around, it won't be any... Uh, uh, sarcastic behavior or anything of that sort or any mocking of the other side and what have you no matter how um, ridiculous one side will sound to the other um, so from here on out that's what the format is going to be but this was designed so that you can be able to make a choice just based on your own um, uh, interpretation that came from this if you hear something that makes sense more than the other then that's what this was designed for it was not designed for us to try to convert anyone it was for us to pretty much just make it clear what our doctrine is and where we get everything from so there wouldn't be any type of mix-ups or any type of um, you know um, uh, uh, I, I would say any type of mistakes that others can be able to make and let's just be clear they didn't know anything about us when we came into it, and we obviously didn't know anything about them when we, when we came into it, but then it was made clear as the debate was going on. So next time it's going to be a format within a cross-examination so that that way the questions that they ask can be answered by us directly, and then our questions that we ask can be answered by them directly. So then it would be where it wouldn't be six questions that's asked and then only one of them are answered because only one of them are remembered, and then nobody is going to go over the time or anything of that sort or under, and then that way we can be able to have the proper format. But just to be clear, this was a debate designed so you can make a choice because they already are pretty much doing what they're doing and we're doing what we're doing. This is for you that are listening. If you are pretty much not necessarily knowing what it is that you're pretty much doing within the faith base and you hear something that so happens to make sense to you, then that is what you need to pretty much go with or further uh, um, uh, discuss or uh, research within your own, uh, pretty much research within your own time so that you can be able to further know what, what would make more, more sense for you. So if it means keeping the law and knowing that that is with faith, with, uh, faith with works 